All right, welcome back to another Econ Podcast with Mr. Hagen. And on this podcast, I'm going to continue to talk about the Coase Theorem. And uh, we said on the uh, on a previous podcast that the, the key to the Coase Theorem, the, the, key, the key to Coase's idea, is that you could solve externality problems by giving pro- private property rights uh, to someone. Didn't, didn't matter who, uh, just as long as you gave private property rights to somebody, then you would get an efficient outcome, an efficient outcome uh, would result, assuming that there were no transaction costs, which of course is not true. There are transaction costs in the world, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on this video. But assuming for a moment that there are no transaction costs, then uh, we can solve our externality problems by assigning private property rights and then just letting people trade. Uh, but this all does not say anything about equity. It doesn't say anything about fairness. Uh, to whom should we give the private property rights? And uh, I'll say something. Uh, Coast did have a little bit of so- something to say about that, and I will. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that towards the end of the video. But it wasn't really an equity thing uh, that he was talking about about it wasn't really a fairness thing so I'll, so I, I'll, I'll talk about both of those as, as we work through this uh, as we work through this idea so so Coase wrote this paper in uh, in 1960 I believe it was and and uh, it's called the problem of social cost by Ronald Coase the problem of social cost I, I think it was 1960 I said and uh, one of the things that it dealt with was uh, trains in, in the old days the, the, the trains you know driving along the tracks would create friction and that would cause uh, sparks and so these sparks that would shoot off of the of the of the of the rails from the friction between the, the wheel and the rails those sparks might uh, go into like cornfields and uh, you know cause cause fires and the, uh, it's supposed to be fire I guess and 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 the fire of course would destroy crop and and hurt the farmer and decrease uh, uh, decrease the value of, of the uh, crops that the farmer had and so we would this is a this is a uh, negative externality problem and we would say well how do we solve this externality problem well of course there's the Pigouvian solution and and by the way what why is it a negative externality problem well because uh, maybe this train goes from uh, Los Angeles to New York and it provides delivery services taking goods from uh, Los Angeles to New York and New York to Los Angeles so so uh, the trade is between people in New York and Los Angeles who are delivering products to each other. They are internal to the trade, but the farmers, they suffer and they are external to the trade. Crops are burning. They lose, uh, they're, they're losing value as, as a result. So a Pigouvian solution. The straightforward Pergubian solution, of course, is a tax. Uh, so you would maybe place a, a, a tax on uh on train delivery services, uh, tax on on train delivery services, and uh, as we discussed on some previous videos, that would shift the supply curve up uh, for train delivery. It would shift up the supply curve by the amount of the tax and and reduce the amount of uh, delivery that the train does. It would get us to the social optimum. The train company would be forced to take into account the negative externality that they were creating here for the farmer. But Coase says there's another solution to this problem, and, and that is that we could assign private property rights. Now, when we think about assigning private property rights, uh, th- there are multiple possible answers. So I'm going to say answer number one, Coase answer number one, is to give private property rights uh, to, the, to the train. Okay, that the, that they have private property rights to drive on these rails, and uh, if sparks shoot out, then that's just too bad because the train has private property rights. Okay, and and then and then we let the market take care of it from there. So if the if the crops that are being destroyed, may, maybe maybe this destroys, you know, maybe back back to here, maybe like maybe like five feet within the train uh, are the crops that get destroyed. So if those crops that are being destroyed are more valuable than the delivery service provided by the train. If those crops are more valuable than the delivery service, then the farmer, the train has the right to create the sparks to drive their train through here, but the farmer could pay the train to slow down. 
if these crops are so valuable as to be more valuable than these delivery services, then then they could the farmers could pay the train either to not deliver the goods. That's probably a little extreme, but they could just pay the train to slow down. When you go past my farm, you have to slow down to to uh, 10 miles an hour, and and the farmer will pay the train uh, the 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 train company to do that, and that would be a potential solution. If if the delivery is is more valuable than these crops, well, then the farmer's not going to, you know, it's not going to be worth it for the farmer to pay the train to slow down. And so he'll, he'll just move his crops back. He just won't grow crops in those first, you know, five feet or so, something like that. So we could give private property rights to the, to the train company. Or we could give private property rights again, but now we could give the private property rights, or alternatively, we could give the private property rights uh, not to the train company, but to the farmers. We could give the farmers the private property rights. Okay, if we gave the private pri private property rights to the farmers, then then the train they're not allowed to shoot sparks. They they have to slow down when they go past the farm because any sparks that start a fire, they would be held accountable uh, for the tr the uh, train company would be held accountable uh, for that. And so uh, as a result of that, if the delivery that the train is providing is of more valuable is more valuable than these crops then the train could pay the farmer to move the crops back and let the train go faster uh, if if the crops sorry if the crops are more valuable if the crops are more valuable, uh, then the then the train, I guess, will, he'll, he'll just slow down because he won't be able to won't be worth it for him to pay the farmer to uh, move his crops back. So either way, the point is this: the point in in Coase's idea and that he lays out in this paper, the problem of social cost, is if we just assign private property rights, then the the uh, the problem will be solved. Uh, these guys can trade in the market, and uh, the most efficient thing will happen. That's the idea all the way up here at the top. The most efficient efficient thing will happen uh, if we just assign private property rights and if there are no transaction costs. But of course, there are transaction costs. What are some of the transaction costs uh, that could arise? Well, there's lots of them. Okay, The problem is transaction costs. What if the people negotiating uh, over this, maybe the train company and the farmers, what if they speak different languages? Uh, maybe like if this is in Europe and the train is the train is traveling through different countries with where they speak different languages, or the time and effort uh, to you know negotiate an agreement, uh, or or maybe for the train there's just there's too many parties involved. They maybe they pass uh, 40 different farms, 40 40 different farms on their way from Los Angeles to. Uh, to New York and, it, and you just can't negotiate with every single one of them uh, or if you can negotiate you got to pay lawyers uh, to develop contracts and and so forth and and, and there's evidence that this these kinds of negotiations are very costly uh, you know countries fight wars because they can't uh, effectively negotiate uh, disagreements they can't come they can't come to solutions they can't negotiate solutions and they fight each other uh, or workers go on strikes because you know they can't find a negotiation that satisfies uh, both both the boss and the and the workers and so bargaining negotiating it's a, it's a costly thing to do and so these transaction costs are real and they matter so so let's come back to our idea of efficient and let's come back to our ideas of equity let's just come back to those those two thoughts so first of all on the efficiency point of view uh, if I remember correctly Coase did say something about how to assign private property rights and that is from an efficiency point of view you would assign private property rights to the uh, 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 based on who had the lowest cost who had the lowest cost of of compliance, who had the lowest cost of to lower the the uh, externality problem or get rid of the externality problem? Is it the train can just slow down? Is it the farmers moving back their crops? Whichever one is the is the lowest cost, that should dictate how we determine uh, who gets the private property rights, who gets who gets the ownership. Uh, the the other issue is equity, and that is fairness. Is it fair to uh, some people might say it's unfair? 
better to give uh, the private property rights to the train because you know this is already a company and companies already have more power in the marketplace or something like this. Of course, the train company they're going to disagree and they're going to think it's unfair to give ownership to the farmers. And so, who should get the ownership? We could debate that from an efficiency point of view. Which one has a lower opportunity cost of complying with with uh, lowering the the externality problem, or should we be thinking about equity? Should we be thinking out thinking about who is it fair to to whom we give the private property rights? Is it fair to give ownership to the uh, private property rights to the train company, or is it fair to give it to the farmers? And I, I definitely don't have an answer to that. Um, the a equity is a very difficult thing to, to try to figure out. What What is fair? Different people have, have different points of view on what fair is. Okay, but the, but the big idea here, the real big idea is that uh, – if, if transaction costs can be kept reasonably low, then we might be able to solve externality problems by assigning private property rights, by assigning private property rights, rather than uh, trying to use Paguvian solutions. All right, this has been Mr. Hagen on uh, another Econ Podcast. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on the next podcast.